Hey everybody, this is Cappy Smack. I think we need to talk about the Dual Universe big reveal stream that happened just earlier today. Now I watched the whole stream and I was riveted by the information I saw. Now during the height of the stream there were 592 people watching. That's an amazing number considering the total number of people who've probably played this game at one point in time or another over the last two years of the beta. Now, 592 people. Those are the total number of people who took out some time to actually pay attention to what this company was saying. And good old NovaCorp, they did everything they could to get you interested. The height of the stream is when they showed some really old video of people going, ooh, ah, and all the cool, cool things in the game. Now, you have to keep in mind those cool things in the game, you're probably never going to get to experience when you start out, unless you happen to be a corp member or an organization member, and you've um, dutifully you know, supported that organization, and then you might get a ship. But the really cool stuff, you're going to have to build yourself. And when you try to build that stuff yourself, it's going to take in-game money. It's going to take Qantas. you got to have a lot of Qantas. So, that was cool. Now, keep in mind that uh, Dual Universe is about to be a Steam game. Well, that means that NovaCorp doesn't really have the chops to publish the game themselves, beyond just the beta. And that also means they really don't have the marketing budget. And that also means they really don't have a player base. Because now they're going to try to attract more players by making it into a Steam game. And keep in mind, the new player experience in Dual Universe kind of sucks. In a big way. And to mitigate that, NovaCork says they're going to come up with a special server where you can play for free. And they're just going to wipe it for you once a week or so. So if you happen to be playing for free for almost a week, the next day you log in, you're going to be wiped. Now, I don't know how it's going to play with certain people, but if I were playing a game and I was testing it out and I, I didn't realize it was going to be wiped, I might be a little unhappy. But the even more unhappy situation might come in uh, if you decide to pay for a subscription. And then you find out that you're faced with uh, being on Haven or Sanctuary. Those seem to be the two starter moons. Of course, you're going to get a house and a landing pad and a, and a cool little Atmo car. So you can drive around the atmosphere on the ground. That's pretty cool. But you don't have a ship. And you're going to have to go find some mining equipment so you can mine. Or you'll be stuck surface mining. And of course, now you can put surface mining in auto mode. It's no longer a cheat. I tried to do that escape trick where you turn on the mining laser and hit the escape button. And then I was greeted with, uh, gee, this is a cheat and don't do that anymore. Well, they've, they've backed pedaled on that one, so that's, that's cool. Now you can put it in auto mode, and you can just mine surface ores all day long. Which, if you're new in the game, you're probably going to end up doing that. Because what you really need is a warp-capable ship. Now, it'd be nice if NovaCorp could give new players a small warp-capable ship where you could carry a kiloton. I don't think that'd be out of, uh, out of, out of the question of you know, what you could give a new player so they can feel like they're in the game. Because how else are they going to sell their ore? You're going to take it to a local market, you put it in your nano pack, and carry a nano pack at a time on that little Atmo car. You're going to take that to your local market, and then what's going to happen? It's going to sit there. Because the big boys are doing their trading on Alioth. Well, I guess you could hop in the Atmo car. And you could go to a district uh, station and uh, take a shuttle to Alioth and put stuff in your nanopack. I've done that before. That's not a great way to do it. 
because that'll be a lot of trips depending upon how much ore you have nafs sitting around now if you want to make the game fun nova quark here's a suggestion why don't you put a kiosk uh, build it into the uh the little unit that you use to claim a tile and let people sell their ore to an npc because that might get them into the market, might get them to the point where they've got some Qantas. And then they might be able to buy a ship from a player. Because their only other option, and maybe this is by design, because it's super cool uh, and dull and boring and not fun, maybe they would need to become a member of an organization who might give them a ship in return for 150k Qantas every day and all the ore that they can mine. And that might be the funnel that people have to go through to get a warp capable ship. Because building a warp capable ship means you have to understand the physics engine, whatever that happens to be at the moment. And that means trial and error. And that means building ships and watching them crash for a while. That's if you want to learn how to build your own ship. And obviously, Nova Quark doesn't want that to happen, which I think is a big mistake. Because, look, Nova Quark, you're up against other titles like No Man's Sky. Now, No Man's Sky, they give you a ship. They just give it to you. And you have to, you have to, it might come with a, with a warp drive or not. And a warp drive is one of those things you can get from an NPC in return for some nanites. And in order to get nanites, uh, you can dupe things. Use game glitches. That's fun. Believe it or not. So, you know, kudos for taking the game live. Thank you very much for letting me know exactly on what day everything I've got in the game is going to disappear. I mean, I don't know why you have to make the contents of, of my in-game wallet disappear. I get that you want to wipe the game, and I really want you to get rid of that mega factory I tried to build. Because that was a real mistake. And I'll never do that again. But, uh, you know, you could just let me have my wallet. In-game wallet. Why not? That'd be nice. It's just data. I don't see why you have to wipe that out. Uh, In-game money, Qantas, is pretty, pretty immaterial at this point. The new currency is time. Because if you wanted to build some kind of a small factory, and I realize individuals shouldn't have big factories, uh, they should have really tiny factories. And to help them out, you could get, just get rid of all the large cores. All the large static cores can just go away. Uh, unless you're an organization with a lot of members, you shouldn't even be able to use them because they're going to be useless. And at the same time, you can get rid of all the medium cores, static medium cores. Unless you're a large organization with enough people, you're not, you shouldn't really have them. Right? And then why not just limit the number of factory elements that would require a print to run? Just limit that to five. Because you're only really going to be able to fill five up every day. Just limit it to five. That would give people the hint you shouldn't have a big factory. As opposed to, you let them build a big factory, and then they find out, I can't run it. Because I'm trying to get my warp cell factory back online, and after two weeks, and having spent 45 million Qantas, I've been able to produce maybe 1,800 warp cells, which is pretty pathetic considering that warp cell factory would produce 31 warp cells an hour. So if that's your idea of fun, good luck trying to sell the game. Now, I really hope the, the, the Steam game for Dual Universe doesn't require a purchase because I have four accounts. Four accounts where I'm paying for a subscription. 
so I feel like I should be able to just jump into the game when it's available on Steam. But we'll see. I don't know. At any rate, this has been Cappy Smack. And I just wanted to share my level of frustration because I'm sure there's a lot of people out there who might want to play the game because it could be fun. It could be. It's not a lot of fun right now. It's, it's a real pain in the rumpus to get into. I mean, I created a spreadsheet when I first got in because I thought maybe I wanted to be a rich industrialist. And where it was going to take several days or weeks of getting that 150k per day stipend to try to build up some kind of a factory that I never should have been working on in the first place because I wasn't the head of a large organization. Well, my time could have been better spent doing something else. And it'd be nice if we can come up with time better spent doing some, something else in the game. It's called engagement. And pretty much every other game out there you're up against, they've come up with ways to engage people in the game without it turning into what feels like a job. And, you know, logging in and checking my mining units to make sure they're calibrated on nine tiles, because I have four accounts and five tiles in Alioth, which you're going to get rid of for me. Thank you very much feels like a job and that part's not fun I mean you could just come up with a mining unit that would self calibrate I'd be okay with that I really don't care what percentage it might get so just self calibrate it that might be fun you never can tell hey this has been Cappy Smack we'll catch you later